Hey Wood Turners, welcome to my shop. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Hey, I got a good little project for you. A skill builder today. Something that you're going to like to do is a little bit fun. And with Christmas coming, Christmas is always coming, remember that? Christmas coming, you want to do one of these. But not one, two. Why? Because you have to give one of them away. We're talking about Christmas lights. A whole bunch of Christmas lights. You want to know how? All you got to do, watch. This is actually not a difficult project, but it's a good skill builder. That is, you, you get to hold pieces, you get to turn two or three tools, it's repetitious, so you try to make them all look alike. Then you get to do a little decorating. And it all starts with a simple little block of wood. I had a piece of uh, spalted pecan out back. And it had some nice lines running through it. And I decided that these lines would be accented by the transparent stains I'm going to use. So they would still look like they're wood. Now, the decorating of these is up to you. If you choose to, get yourself some magic markers. But don't get the ink ones. Get the water, water ones. Because they come out more transparent. Actually, highlighters work. But use that to color them. And when you get all done, you're going to dip the base in some gold or paint them with gold or put some gold leaf, the part that looks like the socket. Yeah, you do want it to look like a light bulb. So, we started with that block. Then I took it over to the drill press. And as you see here, I used my pen chuck to hold it to drill it straight in. And I'm only going to go in about one inch. Now after that, I have to have something to hold it on. Because right now, all I have is a block with a hole in the end of it. So I cut some 3 8 inch hardwood dowel. And they didn't use those cheap, cheap, cheap ramens. I used something that was oak, so I know that it won't just pop off real easy. Then I glued it in using Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. Look, no black fingers, no Gorilla Glue, no foam, no mess. Okay, so then I had that glued up. The next step is to be able to hold it in the lathe. You can hold it in the lathe a couple of different ways. You can hold up the 3 8 inch with a profile jaws like this, the small number one profiles, and that's in most people's chuck package. Or you can get yourself a collet chuck. Now, the collet chuck you're going to see here that I'm putting in is a 3 8 inch, and I get them from littlemachineshop.com. Now, because people wonder where all this stuff comes from, this littlemachineshop.com and this is the item number. So that's the 3 8 inch collet chuck. Once I have it chucked up, then we start making some shavings. Let's get this party started. The collet chuck is in here. I've got the draw bar on it because that's how I'm going to release it. But I'm just going to shove it into the collet chuck. And if you hammered on that dowel hard enough, you probably just stress the end of that hardwood dowel and it doesn't want to slide on real easy. So, we just give it a little bit of a push, okay? Now I've got my tail stock up and got it in the collet. I don't tighten the collet. Don't need to. It's going to hold enough on the friction we have. Now, my pattern, this is the one I turned earlier. So that's what I'm going to use for my basic pattern. But, you don't have a pattern, you want to get started. Go to Lowe's, Home Depot, the grocery store, and get a nightlight bulb. Or go steal one out of the kids' nightlight. But put it back later, okay? Now, we have a shape. We're going to hit speed at max speed. First thing we're going to do is, is uh, make it round.
easy cut. I'm using my little Ellsworth. You can also use your roughing gouge. You want to get round. Can't go nowhere until you're round. Okay, then set some parameters. I need the socket. Then I need a little shoulder. Everything else is bald. So, I'm going to go back to my Ellsworth. What you heard was my tail stock backed up a little bit. I don't want to break this off. So I'm going to keep the tail stock up on it. For a little time. Now, if you're challenged on turning small work, put the brakes on right here. Really. Put the brakes on right here and go to something like three bricks on a page. And sand your shape. But if you're not challenged and you really do want to build some skills, go ahead and continue sliding that bevel. Take it right down to the tip. Now remember, the tip's got to come up short because you got a hole in it. So, you can just get rid of that hole, just like that. I'm going to talk about building a few skills. You learn to do a little bit of detail work. Now, we've got the front end of the bulb ready, right? Let's go back here and put the socket on. The last one pushes all the way down into the dowel. You got that? Now, this thing is ready to sand. When you go to your three bricks on a page, which is like 100 grit, and start there, that's fine. Just a little passing on it. Remember not to take the detail away, so don't go over here. Then work your way up until you're into the 220. Alrighty? You're going to dye or stain this, so you don't want to leave too many marks on it. And I normally don't spend all this time sanding with you watching, but I want to get this one ready. That's 220. Now that really gives me a good base for a finished piece. Now, one thing I want to add right now, this is a black marks a lot. See, our Sharpie. I want to put this band on it right here. See that band? That band is on a commercial bulb. It's on my mock-up bulb. 
it's a demark between the stain and the paint. Alrighty. I accidentally turned the lathe off. That was now I'm gonna take it off the lathe. Right back here, I'm gonna turn my skew point down. Why point down? Because it won't ride up and out. I need to move the remote. And I had to take my draw bar completely out because I didn't tighten it at all. Catch it my fingers. And that is ready for the next step. Once you get turning, you'll realize what you're comfortable turning and how the shape can be. Then you just keep going. Of course you need to do more than one. Now, that's why the draw bar being in there is important because the draw bar not only tightens up but loosens up the collar. So I'm putting it back in place now like it should be. But that loosened up the collar just by tapping on the draw bar. Then I get to pull the dowel out. That's trash. And I go with my next one. Again, I'm going to use my tailstock to push it in there, get it grounded. This time I am going to put a, just a turn on my draw bar to keep it from rattling. And I'm ready to go all over again. These are fun projects. You'll get to play with a few different tools. Build some skills. I did tell you how I'd set it up so you could have a, a guide, didn't I? Well, I got to do that. What I do is take the first one, I put it on a piece of copper wire. This is the wire I'm going to be using for the eyelet, we'll get to that later, but I put it on there and I put it back on to, on this case, I put it around my glue basket on the lathe, that's the glue basket, and it puts it right down here front and center so I can see it and I have a better idea of what I'm looking to accomplish when I'm getting it to turning, but where do I want the round to start? up and then the details I want in it and if all around is off. You didn't think I'd work that skew in there, did you? Yeah. Flip it over, use it like a scraper. Let it in. Tail 
sock has to leave. So I have a little bitty bitty dimple in there. Much better. From there. Sanding. stripe on it. Put the threads in it. Voila! That's French for looky there. We have a bunch of these turned now. What do we do next? Well, we start with we need to have something on the end of it. So we're going to take a scratch all. We're going to put a small hole in the end. You got a 1 16th row bit, you can do that with your little moto tool also. Then we're going to put a piece of wire. I really like this 18 gauge copper wire I get at Home Depot. Number one, it's a little bit decorative. Number two, it's very soft, easy to bend. See that that are real cheap stuff from Harbor Freight. Then I'll put a drop of super glue on it. And put it down in the end of the piece. You don't need a loop, you just need one piece. Okay. You end up with a piece that's being held like this. Then we got to add some color. The color, I save all my trans tint leftovers. But you can use a Mark's Lot, you can do it while it's spinning on the lathe. Mark's Lot works really well at that. Or try, remember I said try a, uh, a, a, a blending uh, highlighter. But we're going to put a little green on this one. Now this green is really, really thin. So I'm seeing a lot of wood. But a light cast of green. Now I can darken this up a little bit. I can add a little red to it. I can add a little yellow to it. I can add a blue to it. I, anything I've got and play with the color a little bit. It's all okay. They're supposed to be primary colors, remember? You only had primaries, you didn't have any chartreuses or ultra purples or anything. But you get that done. Now, this one didn't get the black ring because it was the first one or the last one I turned. But I can always add that black ring right now with the marks a lot. It's a good delineation point between one finish and the other, in which one is a stain and the next one is a paint. Because now we have the black done on the bottom. I want to do the gold. To do the gold, I'm going to use Createx Pearlized. I guess it's got a number of color to it. I'm not sure. Yeah, satin gold. Okay. But, a prototype from Philips had silver. So if you have silver, silver will work fine. 
if you have regular soft aluminum wire, that'll work fine. If you have stainless steel wire, that'll work fine. Not as fine as this, but it'll work fine. Then we're going to take this gold and I'm going to paint that, 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 that base. Why? Because just being wood won't work. It has to be slightly colored. I'm going to get it all the way down to the bottom. All right. Now this is ready for the next step. The next step is clear coat. I really like to use the clear coat in my Ace Hardware store. Ace Hardware's got it for under $5 a can. It works awesome and it does seal up pretty nicely. You want this to have a gloss to it. So you want to put a coat on, buff it a little bit with a little steel wool, then put another coat on. That's why you've got the wire in the end of it. This gives you a place to hang it up to put the clear coat on. You've got them all glossy, then you have to start making your string. I like to use this jute. This is garden jute. It's from Home Depot. But any green core to work. Now remember, those lights were on a green piece of wire. So now you have your piece all ready. You cut the wire to about a quarter inch, half an inch. Then you put it on a, on a cable, on the, uh, the piece of jute, and you roll it over and bend it. Now go ahead and ask me why I didn't use a hook eye. They cost a little money. I'm cheap. This works as well as a hook eye. I've done many, 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 and it looks really good. Now, we're almost ready. We've got a few. I've got a, a red one, and a gold one, and a green one, and a dark green one, and I'm going to do some more, and I'll keep adding them to the string. I think 16 is a nice string. It's a good number, 16. Nice, round, even number, divisible by 1, divisible by 16, divisible by 4, by 8, by 2, all kinds of numbers going to 16. It's a sweet number. I like it. Now, we're almost done. So we have a whole string of these. What do you need to add? A plug. This is one of those snap-on plugs you get for fixing a lamp. And you want to use a white one. You really do. You want it to show. What do you do? You stick the jute through the cap. You tie a knot. Pull the knot back up into the cap. Stick the plug in, take your pair of pliers, and make it up. Why do you do that? For realism. Now, I gave one of the, a set of these to my mother-in-law, who's a dear sweet lady. And first thing she did, she looked at the plug and looked around for a place to plug it in. My father-in-law, who's a woodworker and an awesome mechanic, just said, Oh boy, this is going to be a long Christmas. But they put it out for decoration, and it's still there. And a lot of people keep looking at the plug and say, can we plug that in? I want to see them. They're wood, but it makes for a nice accent piece. Well, there you have it. This is a simple little project. It's a skill builder. You get to play with a few tools. You get to play with a new chuck. You get to turn multiples, which a lot of you guys have a hard time with. I have a hard time with I normally sand them this shape. So you learned how to put a little, little prototype up. And it's all because you want to turn a few Christmas lights. As long as you're having fun while you're making shavings. I'm Captain Eddie. You take care and be good. I'll never forget. Look, looking for a place to plug it in. I guess we had to find the wood outlet. 